As the world continues to fight the pandemic, nurses have been in the trenches of patient care. Like Peter Galunas, a father of two from Texas, who became a nurse just a few years ago. I'm kind of a late life restart. Grover Street, a travel ICU nurse based in Denver, Colorado, who has worked in more than 100 hospitals. It takes an emotional person to do what we do. And Jerry Ann Burrington, a nurse manager at Mount Sinai Hospital in New York City. It's something ingrained in me. All on the front lines fighting COVID-19. What was it that made it so scary, especially in those early days? Patients would come in all the time, and even if they didn't have COVID symptoms, they could very well have it. We weren't protecting ourselves as well as we should have because the protocols weren't quite in place yet. And then coming home, of course, my wife, she made me strip in the garage, say hi to the kids as I'm sprinting past the shower. I just try not to bring anything home. Jerry Ann, when did it sink in for you that we were in for a ride? Just to go home, to hear all the ambulances just down the street. And what hit us was that it's our community that's being ravaged by the disease. It's in our backyard. We couldn't escape it. I mean, how did you deal with it mentally? When we'd be going home, coming out of the train, walking through my neighborhood, and just feeling that quiet contemplation that, okay, we're gonna leave this outside. I know, Peter, you literally did it. You you left it outside in your garage. Now, Grover, you're a traveling nurse, so you add another yeah. layer on top of that to where you're actually going to the hot spots. The areas that I, I was, I've been sent to are the worst areas. And the patients, we have to be there for them as their family. And that emotional level of care is right there all the time, 24 seven. What has been the most challenging part of, of this and the most rewarding part? It's been physically exhausting. It's been mentally taxing in the ED. We're used to huge surges in the flu season, but that's a few months and it's done. Yeah. But a year is nothing that we've ever seen before. Rewarding for all the loss we've seen. We've seen a lot of successes. We've, seen, we've saved a lot of lives. We've improved how we treat things. Do you think of some of those faces of, of the, the patients that we've lost? Yeah, all the time. We're nurses, we got in nursing because we want to be at the bedside. We spend a lot of time with these people. I mean, you develop relationships with them. It's almost like a soldier going to war when you talk about what he, what you've lived through. I'm ex-military and I was in two wars. It's a different war. This is a war against mother nature. When you're in a hospital and you run out of body bags, that, I have never heard that in my 25 years of nursing. Every hospital I went to, we ran out of body bags. It's eerie and it's real. The hardest part was starting to see your, you know, your colleagues getting sick, not being able to do anything. And just like the closing of the doors, you know, and they're in there, you want to go in, but you can't. I mean, those are your colleagues. Those are your family, your work family. That was difficult. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You painted a picture for me that I haven't heard before. So you mean, you know, the hospital doors, the glass doors. And oh, yeah. your, your friend is behind that glass and no one can go in. And, you know, Peter Grover would tell you when you're in that room and the door shut, it's a vacuum. So the only thing that isn't vacuumed out of the room is your emotion. Does it feel like you're in a better place now or are you still fearful? I feel better because of the vaccine, but I also see people not doing things that they're supposed to be doing, like wearing masks and social distancing. That part scares me. The vaccine has brought a lot of peace of mind to an extent, but vaccines are only as good as how many people take them. Three nurses forever changed by their experiences, but hopeful for life ahead. Tell me how the year, last year and a half has changed you. Mental wellness is really a part of self-care and you need to prioritize yourself in order for you to be the best kind of healthcare provider you can be. I'm with Jerry Ann there. The physical and mental exhaustion has forced us to kind of take stock of what's really important to us and what, uh, what we need to prioritize in our own lives. We have to come together as a nation, as people, in order to heal. And if we don't do that, we will never go back to a normal way of life. Gives me chills. Yeah. It was great here. Weren't they great? Really? It was it was fantastic to hear from them and and, and, and listening to them. Uh, and, and you know, as we sort of celebrate the, the reopening of our country to a certain extent, we can't forget that we've lost nearly six hundred thousand people. A lot of right. people. And they, they remember those faces when they go home. How many more would we have lost if it wasn't for those yep. people? Exactly. So if you are a nurse, thank you. Thank you.
Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.